Hey guys, how you doing? Happy Furla Bite Thursday. So this video was suggested by Jenna Blue Sky, I believe. And I took my last Zodiac palette apart because this thing, it's gorgeous, but it's huge. Okay, like the, I mean, look at how much wasted space is on this palette. Whoops, sorry about that. Beautiful colors, so much wasted space. So I took my last one apart because <laughs> that was awesome and put it into a palette like this, which is half of it. And I used these magnetic things that I got from Amazon. I should mention that before starting this project, you need a placemat from like the dollar store because there are, you know, things involved. You need to be careful because an X-Acto knife is your friend. And also, I use a bunch of different types of tweezers. Um, yeah, don't do a manicure before you do this because you're going to destroy your manicure and don't wear a shirt that you like. So, a bunch of different types of tweezers come in really, really handy. And if you happen to own a Cricut... Some of these tools come in really handy too. Like I used some of my Cricut tools last time to take this sucker apart. So, and this is a BH palette. So these are not magnetic pans. That's why you have to put like the little stickers on them to get them to, you know, stick once you get them out. But we're going to dismantle this sucker and yeah, that's where we're going to go. So, and then I have, um... Like, the Mac store, they sell these for, they're like six bucks, but I got my other ones on Amazon, but then I saw this one, I was like, ooh, I may as well pick it up while I'm here. Uh, I'm going to insert pictures of the last two palettes I took apart and the carnage that ensued, and you can go from there. Like, this is the rest of what I took apart. Um, some of them don't make it. Some, some shadows decide that this is the end of the road. And they, they don't want to go any further with you. And you can try to repaint them, but but they're but they're uh they're they're done after this. So we are going to take this apart with X-Acto knives. So hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna be over here. Oh, and always have Clorox wet wipes. And I suggest, like, I'm doing this in pajamas because this is going to go everywhere. <sighs> yeah. This is, this is going to go everywhere. So. So, in this case, I usually try to start at the corner. I don't think I'm going to take this whole thing apart on camera because it's going to be, like, a really, really long video. And... Maybe you can watch it on like four times the speed. I need to get like a chunk out so I can get it like started. So you can start prying it apart. But this is actually really, really, really thick. forgot how much of a pain this was to do. <sighs> Ooh! See, that's why you uh, have a tablecloth, so you don't actually nick your table or surface. Because this will cut through your table and your mat. And then, you basically, you just... Try to pull it apart as much as humanly possible. Wow, this one is not cooperating. The last one tore apart pretty easily. This one is glued to all heck in a hand basket here. Ooh. I wonder if my head's in the video. I'm wearing safety goggles in case you were wondering. I'm a big advocate of personal protection equipment. If I had a chainmail autopsy glove, I would be wearing it, but I do not work in that field. 
So, like once you get this started, it's actually not that bad. It's just getting the initial part started. That's like the worst part. And the few paper cuts that you may get afterwards. Okay. It's starting. Like once you get a chunk of it, There we go. And you're going to make a mess, too. Like, this is a messy project. Break my husband's set. So I'm going to kind of wedge my hand here and then just, like, pry it out without trying to damage any of the shadows. Oh, okay. So... And wow, this one is glued way worse than the other one. The other one was, there we go, okay. Now we've got it, all right, when, like now we've got it started where it's starting to come up. Okay, but I don't wanna take these out just yet. I'm gonna like test the waters. I feel like I'm, you know, a dentist right now. I'm not, I need to go see my dentist, but Certain tools will help you get up and under. And you kind of, they're glued in, so you kind of have to like slowly like work it out and like around to get it out without breaking it. This Cricut tool really does remind me of my dentist. That's very interesting. I wonder if it's the same brand. Okay, and then we can kind of slowly toggle it out. And then we can get it out intact in the pan. Um, now there's gonna be, usually there's a lot of glue and stuff on the bottom that you have to remove. So I'm gonna sit that right there. And as you can see, I'm making a mess, hence the Clark's wet wipes. And then I take one of these. I don't know if I have any of the smaller ones left. And then I just peel. I don't know if you can see this. Normally I'm looking through the viewfinder. Da, 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 da. Okay, I peel the sticker off the back. And I'm gonna stick that to the pan. And now I have a magnetic eyeshadow. So I can pull that off and now I can pop it in here with the rest of them so you just slowly work your way around is this one on screen yeah okay so we're gonna go after this one and you gently like pop it out And this one has a bunch of stuff stuck to the bottom of it. It has all that. So before I put the magnet on it, I have to somehow get this off without getting... And if I, if I hold it upside down, the shadow will fall out of the pan. So you have to kind of like pry it from the bottom. I usually do them like all at the end because it's just easier that way. Like I dismantle it and then I put all the things on, but... You can pretty much get them out. I'll put the magnets on at the end. That just was an example. So now we're back to prying. But uh, yeah, lots of tweezers and a Cricut tool is the best way I've found anyway. And now I can start going after these and you just systematically, these shapes really like to crack when you pop them out. The circle ones pop out easier, but this one, it's already cracked. Like, they, they crack so quick. Um, and, and then you try to take the stuff off the bottom, and then the whole thing falls out. So sometimes you have to kind of, like, let them settle a bit. And as you can see, this is, like, a very messy, messy project. So... These are actually kind of hard to get out. The circle ones come out really nice usually, but these, not so much. If you can get under and then kind of scrape it and then try to keep it like as flat as possible. 
Will you do it? Then you can sometimes get them out without cracking if you're lucky. That's just gonna sit over there and then you just systematically kind of go around. You have to rip the packaging off. Like I have to get to this one over here. So in order to do that, I have to start, you know, hacking away or cutting away at the rest of it, trying to get, usually go after the, of course, that's just what happens. So you just, the one in the center is interesting because it's set a lot deeper down in the thing. So to get that, I usually try to get that one out last after you've gotten the rest of them because that one sits a lot lower. But yeah, you just methodically go around taking chunks of the cardboard pretty much just trial and error really <sighs> and it makes a huge mess see so yeah and then you can start peeling it away going down layer by layer by layer you can see this you probably can't see this oh, okay. and then let's see if I can pop this one out nope I need my my Cricut dentist tool but I don't want to try to pop it out too early or else it'll crack or you'll dent the metal in the pan so like maybe this one doesn't want to come out yet because I haven't actually like gotten the other side of the cardboard. Yeah, see, it's gonna crack. If I try to get under it too soon, it'll crack. And it didn't crack, I just had a little piece come out. But yeah, that will go, oh, nothing on the bottom. Came out clean. So this is how I take mine apart, and it's systematic, and this Cricut tool is, oh man. Um, but tweezers work pretty good too. Like the really, really tiny, good, like tiny, tiny ones work pretty good. Exacto knives, uh, yeah, Cricut tools are amazing for this. Exacto knife, Cricut tools, and then scissors because you need to like pull up the glue. And I mean, if you have nails and you try to do it, your nails are gonna break. I mean, that's most likely the scenario. I don't know if I really need all these colors. I kind of have. The ones from the last one, I think some of these are slightly overlapping with that one. But we systematically just kind of scrape underneath them. And then kind of pull it out. Like I said, usually at the end I clean them up and then put the magnets on them. So they're just sitting over there for right now. And we just systematically just keep going. I don't know if I want to make a video that's like 28 or an hour long because this this could take me a long time um, and it's also really really messy but you get the idea uh, so tweezers are your friend exacto knives are your friend Cricut dentist tool is your friend scissors wet wipes uh, always get like a placemat because when you go through the cardboard too much you will hit whatever surface is underneath and you don't want to scratch your table and this is pretty much how I take my pallets apart and I save a lot of space so I hope you enjoyed how I do this it also reminds me that I am due for my six month dental cleaning and I need to call them so that's a good reminder it's time to see your dentist and please like and subscribe if you like my bizarre video content of checking for asbestos or lead in my lipsticks. I really want to test for lead because I heard that article from 2010 and I really want to see if there's still lead in drugstore um, lipsticks. So I do want to test a few of those, but we'll see. Um, I do have a full, you know, like I'm a scientist, like I have, I have work and things. So, and a massive home renovation project that's still only half completed so this is where we're at this is pretty much how you do it the center one sucks to get out that's the bane of my existence because it's so deeper in there 
Um, my last one came out, but it's also a lot thicker. It doesn't really fit in the pan. Um, no, it's not that one. Whoops, sorry. So when you take the center white one out, it's really, really big. And it's a lot, it's a lot thicker, but see how it's domed? So when you put it in a magnetic palette, which is fine, the problem is when you shut the lid, it's domed, so it's gonna continuously hit the lid. Like, it, it'll it shut flat, but barely, because that one's really domed up over. So just something to keep in mind. That one's hard to get out, but I really do like it. I started using the one as a highlighter, and I really like it as a highlighter now that I've, you know, taken it apart. I don't know if this one's exactly the same as the other Zodiac palette. Looks kind of similar, but this shift looks a little bit more pinky blue. But, yeah, so I'm going to finish doing this after I wash my hands. And, yep, that's how we do it. So... You can order the empty palettes on Amazon and the magnetic stickers, or you can find them at the craft store, or, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, so if you have a faster way or know a better way of doing this, please let me know. But yeah, this is how I do it. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit that like button, and I will see you guys later on. Okay, bye.